Now, one of the tragedy of being a tech reviewer is that you easily get bored with all these products that review. For example, the display settings right behind me is purely based on the Asus ZenBook Duo laptop to be the central core of the design. But somehow I actually decided to make this laptop to be more portable and I wanted to replace it with more tinier, more powerful, compact PC unit. Hence, I actually bought the A7 mini PC from a company called Geekom through Amazon. Now, this one actually has an AMD Ryzen R9, seems very powerful, and a DDR5 of 32 gigabyte and an SSD of two terabytes. So it's surely a huge upgrade for me comparing to this laptop. I'm also gonna try it to see how good it is on the gaming side as well with the few gamings that I already have. So I'm really excited to try it out. So enough said, let's get on with it, shall we? So here it goes. Quite a heavy device actually, look at that. That's the actual unit just as how I predicted on it. We've got a thank you note, quick instruction manual, power cable, UK based, HDMI, and the remainder of the power unit. So at the front, we got the SS10 USB slot, one for the power, one for the data, also the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, the power button. On the left-hand side, we got the memory card slot, very useful for video, blogging, and so on. The power source, two HDMI cables, two Thunderbolt cables, another two of the uh, USB cables, and the internet cable slot as well. It's really nicely designed, silver, and good weight. So as you can see, the docking station can now come out because it was designed for my laptop, the 3.5 five uh, millimeter headphone jack and also the two HDMI slot also the power source for my LED light and the also the host cable can now get all slot in to the back side of this mini PC here we go people nicely tucked in on the corner of the top shelf of my desk and all cable managed up as you can see it's all hidden from the back side of it and some people might argue saying you can actually put it on the back side of your monitor yes I know that information right so it's all powered on as you can see all the LED light is on as well and somehow rather than these two monitors the clumsy keyboard has detected first. So let me get on with the setup. I gotta say I detected the fan noise coming out. So let me actually place it onto the actual unit. So that's quite quiet, isn't it? Right, so we're all connected up. All the speaker and game console all laid down nicely with the LED feature lights. So let's carry out the benchmark test, shall we? So before we actually carry out the test, the main motherboard is American Mega Trends International LLC for the vendor of A7 model. And the actual hard drive, we got the Acer SSD N5000 2 terabyte, just like how it was marketed. It's an AMD Authentic a Ryzen 9 7940HS with a Radeon 780M graphics. And we got the actual graphic cards itself again is AMD Radeon 780M graphics. And the actual uh, RAM, we got 32,000 uh, megabytes for the total physical memory and available physical memory is 22,000 megabytes as well. So that's pretty much the same for the two units. Look at that, all this complex going on. Pretty good, isn't it? I would say that is really good to the response so far really impressed actually so i don't think you're going to struggle any of these sort of office works or multitask sort of side of work actually so that's a windows interface test running as well all right look at that that is pretty amazing i don't know whether you guys could see it or not but all i could see so far I cannot experience any delays. That seems to be pretty good so far for 2D testing. Wow, look at that. Yeah, so web browsing and zoom in and zoom out. You shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. Okay, so we're actually doing a 3D test here and currently it's 85 to almost 100 frames per second on the AMD Radeon 780 graphics for the 1920 by 1080, eight times actually multi-sample that is. So that's pretty good, isn't it? Now the next one is the 
40 to about 30, 20 frames per second for this testing. For some reason, it's actually gone down for 190 by 1080 uh, graphic test. This seems to be more challenging sort of graphic test, doesn't it? It's a bit of a slow reaction. I don't know whether you guys could see that. This one seems quite decent actually. So this is about 120 about or 100 going down to 60 because it's getting more complicated for 190 by 1080 because you're getting more details adding up. That's why it's going down. So it's going down to 60 now, 57. Okay, this one is 61 frames per second because we're on the uh, 2560 by 1440. So it's actually higher sort of density, uh, but still doing well for 60 to about 70 so frames per second. So this one is 190 by 1080 and the frame about 135. And this one is just um, 425 to about 400, just over 400 frames per second. And for some reason, we got this error saying that the OpenCL test is not possible. So for the pass mark, we got 83% of percentile. CPU mark, we got 86, pretty high on the green. 2D mark is just below the 75% of 69%, so it's not green actually. The 3D mark is very poor, isn't it? 43%, not even halfway through to the 75, which is a bit of a shame. And the memory mark is pretty good of 80%. And the disk mark is a 92, which is the highest. So I'm very disappointed with the 3D mark. I don't think it will be able to handle some of my decent games. So let's try it out, shall we? Okay, to start with, let's try the display resolution of 2560 by 1440 for Soul Calibur 6. Okay, so the graphics so far is good because they're only showing two individual alone. I see a bit of a delay there. It's quite clear. Yeah, okay, so the actual voice comes first compared to the graphics. It's responding very slow. Okay. So you can't really play with this quality but the computer itself is allowing it to be played. So it seems like it wants to really let you play it. But for this sort of action fighting game, you will easily get bored with this because it's not corresponding to the speed that you're after. Okay, so let's try the display resolution this time on the maximum still, but 1920 by 1080, shall we? Yeah, that's much better. So 1920 by 1080, you can actually play the game and the graphic quality is really good actually for this resolution. So you don't really necessarily need to go beyond this because this itself is pretty good, but you have experienced the limit of the graphics, I guess, for this AMD. Right, so this is my favorite computer game of all time so far, which is the Romance of Three Kingdoms 14. So if we go to the actual visual graphic settings, sorry, it's in Korean, by the way. If you click here, we got 3840 by 2160. And you can already see that the game itself, I don't know why this game actually designed it to have this sort of dense quality, but it's really slowing down okay and it's struggling and um i don't know why this is actually a really good sort of quality i mean i guess in some way it is there's more dots on it but if we were to go back and change the display setting down to let's say the original 1920 by 1080 and then go back you can already see that it's much better, isn't it? This seems to have more clarities on it, actually. It's a bit of irony, isn't it? Even though you ask for a lower resolution, it seems to have a better graphics result. So I guess for this particular game, you have to stick with the 1920 by 1080. 
but one of the problem is that even though you're on that settings, the actual fan itself of the unit is still running. So I don't know how long I could play this. It might actually overheat the unit. So I'm a bit concerned about that. Okay, we got the Age of Empire 2 Definitive Edition. I don't know whether this is going to be a perfect example, but if we actually look at the settings itself, let's look at the option graphics. We got uh, 2560 by 1440, which is pretty high. I think that's the highest resolution. And if I confirm it, you have no struggle whatsoever for moving around these characters because this is not quite 3D, is it? It's kind of like a mixture of 3D and a 2D. So yeah, if you're a fan of Age of Empire 2 Definitive Edition, you're not going to struggle whatsoever with the highest resolution. Look at that. That is pretty good. So let's actually try the actual horse, shall we? The horseman. Yeah. No delays. So I guess my overall verdict on the Geekcom A7 Ryzen R9 is that the graphics side is pretty weak. I was hoping it to be better than this, but then again, it's a mini PC, so what do you expect? But it seems to be performing better uh, than my Asus Zenbook duo which seems to struggle with many of the games that I actually played early on as well uh, so i guess the recommendation on the gaming side is that as long as you stick with the 1920 uh, by 1080 uh, resolution then it should be fine for most of the game but anyhow i have actually heard a lot of fan noise coming out especially on the romance of three kingdoms 14 series i mean that's pretty much 2d based graphics but even then it somehow seems to create this fan noise when you do multitasking sort of office work and so on you hardly hear the fan just like now it's very quiet unless you actually open up like a video editing or photo editing software that's when you briefly hear it so i guess the multitasking side should be pretty good in a long run so i hope this video sort of showed how cool uh, this Geekcom uh, A7 Ryzen R9 unit is. But if you have any queries, please do comment below. And thank you very much for watching this video. This is LJB Tech. All the best. Bye-bye.